Hey, Mushroom Nerds, it's Anna McHugh. I'm sitting here with one of my dear friends, uh, Lady Pura Cincinnatus, also known as Chicken of the Woods. Uh, I have found a total of three specimens, and these are the first, you know, good uh, edible mushrooms that I have found in 2022, so I am very excited. Uh, Lady Pura Cincinnatus is sort of the first, um, you know, uh, gourmet or choice mushroom that sort of gets its ass in gear on the eastern, uh, you know, southeastern U.S every spring. So we do have morel season that happens in, you know, sort of March to May, sort of depending on the weather. But in the southeastern U.S., morels are very fickle. And so uh, Lady Pura Cincinnatus is sort of a harbinger of things to come because once we hit May, we start to see uh, some of these dudes come out. We start to also see some uh, lion's mane occasionally. And then uh, come June, we'll just have an explosion of diversity, you know, chanterelle mushrooms. We have hedgehog mushrooms. We have, you know, dozens of really, really cool boletes. All of the amazing and deadly amanitas start to make an appearance. So not only is this an exciting mushroom to find for me because, of course, I'm looking forward to eating it, and I'll talk to you about uh, harvesting, safety, all that fun stuff in a moment, but also this is really, uh, you know, a big orange-red flag saying mushroom season is on the way. Morel season was kind of a washout, well, it was totally a washout for me and very, very fickle for a lot of folks uh, sort of in my neighborhood in the southeastern U.S. So it's a profound relief to be spending some time uh, with this mushroom today. So uh, if you are just getting started with foraging mushrooms, this is uh, chicken of the woods. You know, there's a couple of different species of it that I will describe. It is considered edible with caution, reason being there are uh, numerous people. I'd say it's a semi-common reaction for people people to get uh, sick from it. It is short-lived, it is not deadly, um, but you know, nonetheless, there are some people who are sensitive to it. So if you've never tried it before, try a small portion at first and just see how you feel. And you know, if something does go bad, usually it resolves itself pretty rapidly. So, you know, this mushroom also, uh, fortunately, like if you're new and you are sensitive, it doesn't look like anything uh, toxic. And so, you know, there are a lot of mushrooms that have this sort of, um, you know, uh, like rosette appearance and they're porous underneath. Many of them are very woody or corky, so you wouldn't even be able to consume them even if you <laughs> desperately wanted to. Uh, so, you know, the mushrooms you really want to be concerned about from a safety perspective are typically uh, gilled mushrooms. So you have amanita mushrooms, you have little brown mushrooms that grow on wood that can be very dangerous, and a number of other species that will just like make you barf your guts out or poop your butt off, all kinds of things. But uh, Chicken of the Woods is, you know, considered to be, I would, I would say, like, maybe the second or third wild mushroom I uh, ever ate out of the wild. I've been eating it now, gosh, for 14 years, and I haven't had an adverse uh, reaction to it. But, uh, you know, that being said, there are certainly people who do. Um, that, you know, being said, again, identification is so easy. They're so abundant. And if they agree with you, then, you know, it's smooth sailing. They are a very popular uh, edible wild mushroom. All right, so let's talk about identification, where to find them, all that fun stuff. So uh, Lady Porus Cincinnati, is a wood decomposer. So, um, you know, unlike a lot of our edible mushrooms like chanterelles, they are not mutualistic. They do grow in the same place year after year, but because they're a decomposer, at a certain point they'll run out of woody material to decompose, and so the patch will peter out. However, a lot of times, and most of the time, I find them growing at the base of, uh, you know, dying or dead trees. Oftentimes, logged areas, you'll find a good number of these growing, like right at the base of uh, a living or distressed tree or a, uh, you know, in this case, a, um, a tree that's been cut down. And so, you know, these mushrooms are growing on and consuming uh, the wood material and the root system that's underneath. Uh, you know, underneath the tree. I make this distinction because there are Lady Porus mushrooms uh, called Lady Porus sulfurius. Uh, we also have Lady Porus huronensis, which is uh, a more northerly uh, version of Chicken of the Woods that also uh, grows on conifer and is known to be more problematic for people. Uh, but they oftentimes will grow like directly on wood. You'll see Lady Porus cincinnatus growing on wood directly, but very, very frequently the growth pattern is at the base of of, uh, you know, a very abundant source of wood. And as a result of that, also,
also, you know, it, it, if it were growing on something, it would be uh, sort of shelving, so sticking off the side. But because they grow from uh, the ground often, you'll have this like beautiful rosette situation going on and just a simple base that I popped it up. All right, so identification wise, you have a brightly colored mushroom. This is a very fresh one. So it has all of the range of colors that Lady Pora Cincinnatus uh, can display for you when it's in good condition. So when it's at its finest, it is at its youngest. It is a mushroom that really uh, starts to develop unpleasant uh, textures and flavors very quickly. It's called Chicken of the Woods because it really is, when it's in its right condition, which lasts roughly 15 seconds as far as I can tell, but in that 15 second window, it is a dead ringer for uh, chicken meat. And it is delicious, it's very tender, it takes flavors very well, so it's really good with, you know, rosemary and thyme and, you know, all those fun uh, green herbs that we like to cook our uh, poultry with. Um, but, you know, as the mushroom matures, what happens is you start to get uh, more of a fibrous uh, sort of texture going on. And then additionally, you get some really weird, like chemically off flavors. And you can still taste the chicken, but like if you try a chicken of the woods and it's not in the right shape, you're like, well, yeah, it kind of tastes like chicken. But this is one of those moments where foragers are saying something's really good and it's not actually all that good. There are a lot of scenarios where foragers will be like, this is amazing, it's the best mushroom I've ever had. And you're like, okay, it's kum see kum sa. It doesn't, you know, it's better than a Hot Pocket, but not so much better than a Hot Pocket that I'm going to uh, make dinner reservations for it, for instance. So, um, but you know, as this mushroom gets older, you start to uh, develop these sort of, you know, again, off chemical flavors and it becomes very fibrous. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's not very pleasant to eat. It's almost like chicken that has had a little bit of, um, you know, like gross sulfurous stuff powdered, uh, thrown all over it. And then, uh, you know, it's been cooked to such a degree that it's like really, really dry. Like if you've ever had one of those people who's terrified of being poisoned by chicken and they cook it for like three hours and it comes out and it's just these shriveled peels of unhappiness, that's what an old chicken of the woods can taste like. And so, you know, um, harvesting them when they're in good condition is best practice. So, uh, color wise, that's, uh, you know, and, and sort of the, the form of the fruiting body, what you have is um, a peachy colored mushroom and it's like a peachy orange color. Uh, when it is in its best condition, and you can see this, you have these, uh, you know, really uh, nice white and tender uh, white tips. And that's just a, you know, a continuation of a porous white undersurface here. So, uh, but as, you know, the mushroom sort of has uh, matured, you have uh, sort of concentric growth zones where that, uh, you know, really light color, or uh, I'm sorry, that that really, uh, you know, bold uh, sort of peachy color recedes and becomes like a lighter orange. And that's an indication basically, like here, I expect it not to be edible, but on the outer rim, I expect it to be nice and tasty. If I find a mushroom that is really uh, immature and is, you know, very, very tender all the way throughout, when I harvest it, one of the things Lady Pora Cincinnatus will do when it's like, you can eat the whole thing, which is actually kind of uncommon, but if you pop it up from the base and there's a ton of whitish tinged water that just soaks your hand, that typically means that the whole fruiting body is very, very fresh and is very tender. This one gave me a little bit of uh, moisture when I popped it up, but it wasn't dramatic. I am um, going to butcher this and I will try to do it, um, you know, on screen so that you can see sort of how I process these mushrooms in the field. So I'm only taking home what I want to take home with me. So uh, concentric growth zones, oranges, yellow color. We have our uh, porous undersurface as well. See if I can get a nice up close of that. So, you know, we have a couple of different um, um, sort of uh, fertile surfaces for mushrooms. G gills are the ones that people most commonly think of. So those are the little blade-like structures that, uh, you know, spores fall from. But a polypore, uh, which is what this is, uh, polypores are basically, they have many, many little pores and that's where, uh, you know, the, the spores come from. And so as a result of that, it's kind of almost a little bit sandpapery, but you know, it, it, since it's soft and tender, you can feel uh, the pores a little bit, but not tremendously so. So I have this mushroom here. This is probably the youngest of the bunch, but I also have this giant fella behind me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, try to give you a sense of how I go about uh, determining what I want to eat. So, um, you know, as I mentioned, this mushroom uh, typically, like as you start to get into the middle of it, it starts to become a little bit more
more um, fibrous. So I'm gonna take it apart and I can show you sort of the interior of the mushroom itself is, uh, you know, firm white flesh. You have a little bit of that uh, sort of peachy orange staining where the, uh, you know, the cap starts to come in. But as you can see, you have uh, kind of this fibrous look to it. And, you know, if it uh, makes a noise, basically, as, as fibers are pulling apart, uh, it's oftentimes starting to get a little too tough to be enjoyable. So what I do uh, is I just basically harvest around the outer growth zones, and I harvest the spots where my knife just goes clean through, you know, there's no hitches, there's no moments where I'm like, oh, that's kind of fibrous. Uh, so I just keep doing that basically. Oh, and see, I've hit that second con concentric growth zone and all of a sudden it's much, much more difficult for me to cut through. So this one's really actually like super duper obvious uh, where the uh, sort of the less desirable parts begin. So here we have another piece. I'm just going to, now that I have a suspicion that this, uh, you know, outer layer is uh, the best. So I have this sort of like funky growth zone, rosette knuckle, whatever. Um, and I'm just going to as safely as I can and also show you cut my way along that. So I'm going to do that with the whole thing. When I bring it home, I'm most likely going to uh, marinate it for a little bit. And uh, I think I'm going to do something like lemony and uh, then maybe some uh, creamy sauce or something like that. So I have a feeling this is going to be a good bit of uh, rosemary, maybe some uh, lemon thyme. And uh, then I'm going to throw it together with some pasta and, and creamy stuff and lots of cheese, because if I fail, then cheese will at least support me and my, my um, eating habits. All right. So um, as far as other species are concerned, Lady Porus cincinnatus is the most common uh, in my experience in the southeastern U.S. I find this bugger all the stinking time. So, you know, May is when I start to see them, but I can expect to continue seeing them throughout mushroom season. So all the way into, you know, October. I think October is probably the latest I've ever found them. They do kind of favor warmer weather. Um, Lookalikes wise, you're in pretty safe territory. So the things that look like this mushroom are also edible. So I'm going to talk about those briefly. Uh, first of all, the one that probably uh, looks the most similar at a glance is uh, called uh, Bondarzoea berkeleyi, known as Berkeley's polypore. I may have absolutely destroyed the Latin pronunciation on that, and I am not sorry. So, uh, but I'll try it one more time just because it's got so many like powerful consonants. Bondar, mm, Bondarzoea berkeleyi, Berkeley's polypore. Anyway, it looks very similar. It oftentimes grows at the base of big old trees and has a rosette pattern. It's oftentimes larger than this mushroom, but the thing that really distinguishes it, it is, is, is it's a sort of like um, beige, tan, pale color. So you do have concentric growth zones, but it doesn't really have this orangey color at all. Now, when these mushrooms don't get a lot of sun or they're, you know, shaded or they get rain on a lot, they can be kind of light in color. So you really have to approach it and mess around with it. Berkeley's polypore is edible. I do not like it, not one little bit, uh, but I knew, know people who do. There's just something about it that's like in that same sort of chemically zone as uh, Lady Porus Cincinnatus when it gets a little older. And I'm just like, no, double, triple, no. So, uh, but you know, it's not harmful. It's just a mushroom that I personally am not fond of. And, um, you know, all caveats around me being picky and not wanting to say that other people's preferences are incorrect. But so, uh, Bondarzoea, <laughs> Berkeley eye. We also have Maripolis sumstenia, uh, and that is known as the black staining polypore. Similar deal. It tends to be a little less leafy and a little more like stumpy and and fat and like more uh, more like a chunky base and less uh, you know leafy flowering uh, appearance. Um, that mushroom also, as soon as you start to handle it, it stains very radically, like a dark, dark uh, sort of purpley black black color. It is edible. Um, I do like it better than Berkeley's polypore. It, it's kind of neutral. Like it's, it's got, uh, some people have compared it to beef liver. I don't know if I buy that, but anyway, um, you know, it is a sort of pale color as well. So really, if you're looking at, and if you're looking at and throwing around an orange mushroom, uh, that is similar to this, uh, it is, um, also possibly, oh gosh, now I'm going to try really hard to get the Latin pronunciation of this one right but I might not. Piptoporellus, pretty good on that one. Solon, 
Soloniensis. And so it's like S-A-L-O-N-E-I-N-I-S-E-S or, you know, one of those. <laughs> anyway, it's relatively new to me, uh, but uh, not new to me finding it, but new to me knowing and trying <laughs> to regurgitate and remember the name. Uh, anyway, it is an orangey mushroom and it has some similarities. Uh, it tends to be a little less frilly on the edges and a little more like fat and stumpy. Uh, and then additionally, um, you know, it's got this orangey sort of, um, you know, salmon-y color, but it is continuous throughout the fruiting body. And so it's uh, sort of like a, an orangey, colored to a like orangey brown color throughout and it's a very wet mushroom oftentimes so it's almost spongy like you squeeze it and you'll get you'll get water out of it I don't find that one very frequently uh you know when I'm thinking of things that I I uh tell people about as lookalikes I oftentimes don't even include it just because I don't see it but uh that said you know it's around it's not something to be concerned about or dangerous I don't know a lot of people who have opinions about eating it or not eating it as far as like quality is concerned but um anyway so Lady Poor Cincinnati also has other uh sort of relatives in the Lady Porus genus that are called chicken of the woods that are edible so we have uh Lady Porus sulfurius is probably the one you'll most commonly see uh in the southeastern U.S. it grows on hardwood um and unlike uh Cincinnatus it has a yellow under uh surface instead of a white under surface and so it's sort of a lemony yellow color and then it also tends to be uh more like um classical orange color on the top so you don't have as much of this sort of pinky salmon stuff going on um, and so you know that's a that's a mushroom that you'll find around here we also have uh, further up north lady porous uh, huronensis that mushroom is known to cause significant numbers of people uh, you know difficulty and and makes them feel sick it oftentimes also grows on uh, conifer and so you'll oftentimes see on mushroom forums um, conversations around like chicken of the woods is safe except for the ones that grow on conifers and unfortunately that's not true like there's a west coast conifer chicken of the woods that grows on dug fur that is pretty reliably safe you sometimes see uh you know lady porous sulfurious i believe sometimes grows on conifer but really it is lady porous huronensis that has a tendency to grow on conifer that is known to be uh the most problematic for people and so you know as with a lot of information in mushroom land it's like it's close but just not quite complete information you would wouldn't find uh, Huronensis. I don't think I've ever seen an observation of it, you know, this far south. Um, that doesn't mean it doesn't exist and it doesn't mean there isn't an observation of it. It's just an observation that I have not in fact seen. Uh, so yeah, you know, in conclusion, Lady Pora Cincinnatus is, uh, I would say, not even in my top 10 or even 15 edible mushrooms anymore um it is you know when you find it and it's in good shape it's very abundant it's very pretty it's wonderful for photography and i'm i'm uh uh do mushroom art and so uh lady porous cincinnatus is really fun because it's so like flowery and bubbly and covered in in you know different colorations and so forth uh but you know as far as it's like the experience of eating it, it's, I mean, it's fine. It's just not super duper special and unusual the way that some of our other mushrooms are. So, you know, Hen of the Woods, uh, which is Griffola frondosa, also known as maitake, that grows in the fall, also grows with uh, oak. And it is similarly like a, you know, sort of flowery looking thing. It's much more fingery and uh, and delicate, looks much more like uh, feathers for the, you know, the name Hen of the Woods actually makes a little more sense than Chicken of the Woods. Uh, but, you know, it has a really unique uh, maitake flavor to it. And whereas Chicken of the Woods at its best, like on its best day, it's doing a darn good job, uh, you know, mimicking chicken. That that said, really fun to find, beautiful mushroom, a great sign of times to come uh, because honestly, not mushroom season is, is a very difficult time of year for me. So the level of excitement and relief I feel at finding this cannot be understated. I hope you have a wonderful mushroom season coming up. I can't wait to make some videos as I start to find things that are uh, a little more compelling than, you know, molds and uh, unusual little things growing in my backyard. So uh, in the meantime, take care of yourself and I hope you're doing great.